Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK. Into your homes, onto your phones, into your space. Uh, welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you're welcome to put the thumbs up, the thumbs down, subscribe or share. Um, I think I am going to do like a daily roundup because I think there's so much things going on. And I think if I play like a newscaster and just give my comments on the different subjects, I think it'd be much better. Well, you can, I, you know, I appreciate your opinion. You can always put it in the comments, but I think it'd be much better than me doing, you know, two or three videos, one after the other. It might be a little bit longer, but I think it'll be easier. Um, well, easier on your ears and easier on your eyes that way. I mean, you don't want to look at my face all day and look at one video and think, oh my God, not another one, not another one, not another one. So then I thought, well, why don't I just combine the news releases? So this is the news as of today. Um, as you know, I'll be doing my show this evening. So this is my last video for the day. And I'm just going to highlight some of the information I've received, some of the information um, I've noticed and what is going on. OK, so let me know if you like this format. I'd be interested to know. OK, so this is the daily news roundup. So I'll try and do this every day. So we've heard that um, Boris Johnson's got the virus. That's the first thing. I'm a bit concerned with all those people in Parliament that he's been with. I'm not quite sure when I was watching the Parliament, um, watching them in Parliament yesterday, whether or not they were two metres apart. Um, the people behind him didn't seem as though they had that distance. So I'm not quite sure if they're all on isolation and whether or not um, in question time, I'm not quite sure how close they were or if they shook each other's hand at some point. I don't know. All I'm saying is, is that he is self-isolating in 11 Downing Street and they've shut off number 10 and 12 Downing Street. So I don't know how many people are self-isolating. He probably needs a rest, um, a rest from all these questions he's being asked and everything else. So um, he reckons he's going to lay low for seven days, but he's still going to do the video conferencing. So I guess he's still not going to get a complete break from it if he does, if he does manage to keep it up. But there again, we don't know. So that is Boris Johnson. Um, oh, I'm very convicted. Well, no, take that back. Um, his, oh, what do I call her? His girlfriend, I guess. His girlfriend, you know, she's pregnant. Well, they don't live together, so she, there's no risk of her catching it, the virus. Um, apparently, um, COVID-19, um, I'll put the source below, is no longer considered to be a high consequence infection disease in the UK. This came out a little while ago. Um, apparently the Advisory Committee on Dangerous Pathogens, in brackets ACDP, is also of the opinion that COVID-19 should not be classified in this way. But if that's the case, why all the hype? And I'm going to show you this video that someone sent me, Excel. It's where they have the crafts and where they did Miss World. Yeah, they miss, did Miss World. And it's massive centre. And the car park caters for about 3,500 cars. And they're converting it into a makeshift hospital to accommodate about 4,000 patients. And they've got two morgues in there. So I'm not quite sure if it was if it has been deemed... Um, What's it not deemed? Um, should not be classified as an infectious infectious disease. So I don't know why they would be building such a large hospital underneath the ground. Anyway, this guy is actually at the Excel and he is showing you his experience. I bet you I can't bloody find it now as usual. That's me all over, isn't it? Miss this, miss this organised. I know where it is though. Okay. I'm here at uh, Exile, Central London. 
Do you see him making a new makeshift hospital? He's currently making up cables for it, but I didn't take this virus to be set very, very seriously until, you know, saw this this morning. I come in, and this is the size of the hall. This is where it's all going. We've got 4,000 beds to go in, sorry. Two morgues. This hall is a kilometre long, you know? And there's a hall out on the other side as well. I'm not sure what's happening there. I just want to keep you all updated. And if you're not taking it seriously like I was in, I think we really need to start. Because they're preparing for an absolute high death toll here, you know? So there we go, Excel, London, welcome to NHS Nightingale. Yeah, so, I mean, most of you won't even know about Excel, but like I said, it's where they had uh, Miss World, where they do the crafts, they massive events. So that's being converted as a makeshift hospital. Um, let me see. Car firms are being told to convert their factories to make ventilators. Um, 405,000 volunteers are held from the NHS. Jeremy Corbyn is concerned that they are volunteering for the... Well, he didn't say they're volunteering for the wrong reasons, but he did say he hopes they're volunteering for the right reasons. And that they're qualified enough to do the job. But I mean, like Boris says, they're drivers, they're goodness knows what else. Um, clinical trials start next week, or they may have already started. And Boris Johnson wants to make sure that the right people get tested. And he's, they're emphasising that they're not antigen um, vaccines, they're antibody tests. Um, Jamaica is rated best at dealing with the coronavirus, um, one of the most cunt safest islands, and they've kind of turned it around very quickly as well. Um, but um, people, are be the people are being warned not to call the cops of it because they're already overwhelmed unless it's an emergency. I'd imagine that if you're calling the emer if you're calling the cops of it, you are. I mean, you you feel as though your situation is an emergency. They always have the, they have this saying that what's an emergency or what is urgent for one person is not urgent for another. So if you are in a situation where you need to call the consulate, I'm not quite sure what the waiting time is. Like I said, you've got people stranded outside Jamaica. Um, Jamaica closes her airport at 11.59. So um, a few planes were due to fly into Jamaica, but because... They closed the airport at 11.59 at night. Um, their flights were cancelled. I mean, if you know you've got flights coming in, why shut the airport? It's really, really unfair because you've got different time scales. Now these people are stranded. We don't know what their position is. They're stranded in America, they are. And they're hotel workers, 27 of them. Um, what else have we got? Oh, well, this is really for those people, well, this isn't really, well, I guess it is useful. I just wanted to give you the times and the shop opening times of the large supermarkets. So if you do need to get some last minute bits, there are dedicated, um, there is a dedicated hour for NHS staff, emergency staff, the vulnerable, the elderly. So Tesco is 6am to 10pm. NHS staff can um, browse um, one hour before opening time. ASDA, 7am to 11pm. Priority is given to NHS staff, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 8am to 9am. Sainsbury's, they're open 8am to 8pm, Monday to Saturday, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 8am um, to 9pm for dedicate, is dedicated to the elderly, disabled, vulnerable customers, NHS, and social care workers. That's on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., and that's Sainsbury's. Aldi, um, they're opening Monday to Saturday, 
8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So there's no change in that, although it's 6 p.m. in Scotland. Lidl opening one hour earlier for the elderly, but they didn't give their opening times, but they're, I guess they're the usual opening times. Iceland is opening one hour early for the elderly and the last hour of trading is for the NHS staff. Morrisons, they have an NHS hour, Monday to Saturday, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Marks and Spencers have Tuesdays and Fridays, the first hour for NHS and emergency staff. There's no ch changes to the hours of work. Waitrose, no change to the hours of work. They have one hour um, for the elderly and the vulnerable. I'm, I, I'm assuming it's the first hour. Co-op, there's no change, but there are shopping restrictions. NISA, no change to the opening times, but there is help for the elderly, vulnerable, and they are offering free deliveries. There are also new tenancy forms for um, eviction. You know they were talking about protecting the tenants or protecting the landlords. Um, on the one hand, they're saying they're protecting the tenants by um, deferring eviction. They were deferring it for a month so people who landlords who want to evict have a month extension and they cannot start the eviction process until the completion of those three months um what else so there isn't a complete ban on evictions not a complete ban of, and during the coronavirus outbreak just a just an extension of one month so before it was two months and now it's three months. So those of you who was hoping to get um, protected from eviction, that is not happening. Coronavirus was given royal assent. The Coronavirus Act was given royal assent. I don't know if it was last night, but it was very, very recently. And it extends the notice period only for evictions. Government will not be bailing out airlines, but Richard Branson is bailing out Virgin. Um, one million workers are involved in the travel industry, and you know what the impact of that's going to be. And it's very likely that EasyJet may go under in light of this. So that is my short but sweet roundup. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.